Alright people, I'm totally like making another rant on the Shattered Memories for Silent Hill that came out. Uh, it came out today in the US. I think it's been out like for a couple days in Europe or something like that, but I haven't really been paying attention. Um, I know that I've been like really busy with everything right now, and I just really like don't have time to make a walkthrough on this game. And so I just decided that I would play a little bit of it and give you my thoughts on it so far. So far, um, you know, I already had a rant on here before and a lot of people are fucking retarded because they really didn't un like understand that I made that rant back in April when the game I thought was an April Fool's joke and there really wasn't anything on it. So I never really got around to updating that rant, but don't really care. But I'm just going to give you what I personally think about the game right now. Um, you know, the fact that it starts out with a psychology warning, it's just like, what? Uh, about the game playing you or something like that? And then I'm just like, are you serious? You know, you think that there's just like, you know, enough shit going around. And, you know, that the game actually has to warn you that there's, you know, oh my god, this game may like fuck you up mentally if you play it too much or something. It's like, what? I don't care. And so, you know, the game kind of starts like the demo does. You know, you start in the psychologist's office and you pretty much just like fill out a questionnaire. Now, apparently I've been told that like whether you pick true or false on certain questions, it like completely changes like the aspects of the game. You know, where you can go, what the enemies look like, what the people look like, etc. But I didn't take it seriously. I was over here playing with my friends, and we pretty much just picked what, like whatever was like the most freaking hilarious answer we could possibly pick. And I think some of these questions were like really inappropriate too. You know, like I like to role play during sex, and I'm just like, are you serious? Why in the hell is this? What the hell does this questionnaire have to do with anything anyway? I thought I was supposed to just be sitting here recapping my story of like my trip to Silent Hill to find my daughter. Why the hell do you need to know about like me playing, you know, me role playing during sex or if I like to drink or if I like to cheat on my girl or dude? And it's like, what the hell is this? So, you know, apparently, like, you know, it's a fun aspect where, you know, Picking your answer changes the aspect of the game. But in all honesty, like this game itself would have been completely decent if it was standalone. Like if you added in like, you know, your own backstory and stuff like that, you know, new characters and whatever. But because it's a re-imaging of the first game of Silent Hill, that it's just what you expect from a Silent Hill game is not this. So, I have to say that when I first started playing it, like, it was alright. It was kind of hard to get used to the controls. You know, it's, it's like, it's not that it's not easy to get used to the controls. It was just kind of, like, awkward. Because, in all, it, the game is completely black. You cannot see anything except for this little round thing that's supposed to be where your light is shining. So, that was really fucking annoying. So, you know, I mean, I guess they were all trying to do that so that you could, like, add, you know, atmosphere or something like that. But in all honesty, that just added annoyance to the game. But in all honesty, you can get around it. Not a big deal. So, going through the game, the game actually looks pretty nice for, you know, something on the Wii. I know that, like, I bashed on the Wii earlier, like, on my other rant, saying that, like, you know, why of all, of all things the Wii? But... The Wii's actually not that bad. I love my Wii. And the graphics actually look decent. But I was kind of noticing some, like, glitches. You know, like, he is, the character was jumping all over the place. And stuff like that. The shadows were off. But what do you expect? The game just came out. And moving on to, you know, the whole... Your, your Wiimote being your phone... This whole, you know, Blackberry iPhone thing in the 80s doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but, you know, who the fuck cares? It's kind of nice. Doesn't really do a whole lot for you. You know, you can call people. There's actually, like, random phone numbers you can find throughout the game. And just be like, hey, there's a phone number. I want to call someone just to fuck around. And so I did. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And, you know, like, I guess in the demo, 
when you end up in the bar or you end up in the diner in the demo that was on IGN. In mine, I ended up in the bar because I guess I picked I like drinking or something like that. So the bar scene wasn't really all that like different. So you just talk to some old lady there and she's all like, oh, you know, I'm totally close enough. Get the fuck out of my bar. And, you know, I really didn't like that. Apparently you're supposed to be living in Silent Hill where like the old one, you were on a vacation to go to Silent Hill. And I guess the, it's just, you know, another thing about they're trying to change the story up, but who the fuck cares, I guess. Um, what else is there? Uh, well, after that scene, you can actually use your phone. It's your map, it's your messaging system, you can call people, you can take pictures, and you can look at the pictures you've taken. And you kind of, like, if you walk past the playground, you kind of notice that there's, like, a shadow there that you can't really tell what it is. But when you take a picture of it, oh my god, it shows up. Jumps right the fuck out at you that there's something there. And then all of a sudden you get a message on your phone. And there's tons of these. Whether it's, yeah, I mean, it's not just that that you take pictures of. You can just walk up to something then there's like, I guess, a ghost possessing it, you know, kind of like in Luigi's Mansion where there was a boo in a drawer and you walk up to it and it tells you like there's something in there. But in this, you just walk up to it and it flashes, something falls over and then there's a recording on your phone of like what happened, which I guess is supposed to be the shattered memories aspect. And I just think it's meaningless bullshit. What the hell does this have to do with me finding my daughter? Why do I care about this lady whose broken marriage, you know, went down the shitter? You know, why do I care about this girl in the playground? Why do I care about, you know, this guy on a hunting trip? You know, what does this have to do with me finding my daughter? I don't care. And, you know, it's just one of those things. I guess they were just trying to, like, experiment with it. And, you know, once again, the combat comes back. You know, the, like... Four months ago, or whatever, six months ago, April, I uh, said that, you know, they, they were just going to have you, like, busted a nut and everything, but that's not the case. And the case here is that you really cannot fight. Everything is going to rape you in the asshole unless you run away. And the only thing that you have to defend yourself is a flare, which the only thing it does is you run around with it like a dumbass, and the enemies all of a sudden don't want to touch you. But that's it. After that, you just want to, like, make a beeline for wherever the hell you're supposed to be going. You don't have time to figure out where that is because there's enemy on your ass, you know. You know, zombies in the camp, you know, shoot him, shoot him. You don't got time to smoke a bold. And so, it's really like that. Is you really don't got time to do any of this shit. They give you an option to look behind you, look to the sides of you, but you ain't got time to do that shit. Because these enemies are going to be all over your fucking ass if you even stand still for a second. And in all honesty, it doesn't matter if they catch you. If you die, it's more annoying than, like, penalizing. Because all it does is send you back, like, ten feet to wherever your last checkpoint was. And you just have to figure out the best path. You know, it's kind of, that's kind of like the puzzle in itself. Is that it's a trial and error. Is that if you pick the wrong door, you end up going in circles all over the place. Which just means that enemies have more of a chance to, like, knock you on your ass. And if you happen to, like, die in the middle of, like, trying to figure out where you're supposed to go... The only thing it does is send you back to the beginning of this, like, maze, and you just have to pick the right paths. And, you know, the enemies only show up in the other world, which is now, like, everything's encased in ice and everything freezes over. So, at least there's that, you know, and that when you're in the nightmare world, that's the only time you really have to worry about enemies. Because other than that, you're just, like, exploring. So, you know, it's just, like kind of boring at first you try and find stuff and move on then the nightmare world comes out and says, oh my god you gotta fucking book it doesn't matter where the hell you need to go just look on your map there's a checkpoint it tells you where you need to go doesn't tell you how to get there but all you need to know is that you just need to fucking run and just book it oh my god there's enemies on your butt fucking run oh there's a door bust through it and you know it's like it's not really scary it's more like uh, you know, action-packed, you know, you're expecting just one of those movie, cl classic movie explosions to happen behind you or something like that. And it's, you know, the whole game about trying to be more, like, you know, you try to be, what is it, immersive? 
you know, try to, like, capture your attention and make you feel, like, immersed in this game's atmosphere. Didn't really work out so well. But, you know, what can you do? My overall thoughts is that it's an okay game. I wasn't really expecting it to be, you know, super special awesome that it was supposed to be. But that's about it. There isn't really anything else to it. It's just a somewhat decent game. Like, if it wasn't, like, trying to rip off Silent Hill, you know, like, take that story and try to, like, make its own thing, it probably would have been better. But because it's trying to, like, take the Silent Hill story and completely change it, it kind of ruins it. So, overall, you know, rent this game. Don't really buy it. Go check it out if you want lols. Uh, than that, though, not really worth the time. I just honestly think they need to stop with the Silent Hill series, because it's just over.